Evernote's a great place to store notes and anything you want to remember, but if you are not careful, it can become a huge dumping ground. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards. I want to show you how to set up a great reference system that will work for you. I'm a certified Evernote expert. That means I get to participate in regular calls with the Evernote team so that I can share the latest developments with you. So please subscribe. You won't miss any of the videos then, and I'd really appreciate it. I keep everything I need or may need in the future inside of Evernote. I'll show you my system in a second, but first I want to go over some basics with you. What do I consider reference? Well, anything that's not actionable, to use a term popularized by GTD, the Getting Things Done methodology. Uh, that could be instruction manuals, brochures, articles, uh, membership cards like from my motor club. Lots of things are sent to me digitally, so it's really very simple. If something is not sent to me digitally that I want to save, I use the camera on my uh, phone. I can just open up the Evernote app and use the camera. Or I use my scanner. Now remember, a good reference library is not a build and forget it kind of thing. Uh, once you have a reference system set up, you really have to maintain it in order for it to be always up to date and valuable to you. Every time you see information that you find valuable, put it immediately in the appropriate folder. But be sure to examine your reference library at least once or twice a year for outdated information or things that you'll no longer need that will keep your system in good shape. Having information that you may need in the future inside of Evernote is so very helpful. Let's take a look at my notebooks, and here I've created a notebook stack for reference and archive. Within that stack, I've created three notebooks. One for lists, one for personal items, and one for work items. You could maybe also have one for travel, if you uh, travel quite a bit. But these are the three that I usually suggest for most people. For some people, they don't need three different notebooks as part of the reference. They just have one reference notebook where they put all of the reference items and then they rely on search to find them. That's one way of doing it. I happen to like separating all of my reference items into these three different notebooks in that stack. Let's go over them. Let's start with our personal notebook. Uh, this would be any kind of information that I might need related to you know, my personal life, my non-work life, if you will. Some of the things that I might put in there uh, would be flowers that I've seen that, you know, I want to make sure that I plant again so I can just uh, take an image of something that I see in a catalog and I put it into reference. So all I have to do is uh, search on flowers and the date and I would say, hey, I want to plant some black-eyed Susan in my garden. Or, I use this one all the time. This could go in your travel notebook, too. You know, when you go to the airport, you park your car, and then you rem you kind of forget where you park it when you uh, get back to town. I always take a picture of where my car is parked uh, in my airport. Instead of uh, uh, putting names like premium, uh, they have like uh, uh, floor three, row B, uh, something like that. So I just take a picture with my camera, put it into my archive or into a travel notebook, and I will be able to see where I park my car when I get back to town. I don't know, you may want to have a copy of your college diploma readily available, uh, particularly if you're just starting out or some other certifications that you're proud of that you may want to share with a, uh, a potential employer. I use this one all the time. Uh, I have inside of Evernote a picture of my license plates, uh, you know, a license plate for all of my cars. This comes in handy when you check into a hotel and when you're registering and they say, do you have a car parked? And I go, yeah, I do. What's your license plate? <laughs> Be darned if I know. Uh, so I can just do a search and here I have an image of my license plate. Anything that you might want to use again, uh, manuals for uh, household equipment can go into here as well. Another thing I like to do is have one for lists. Now in this sample notebook, I don't have any in here, but what might I put into lists? Well, the maintenance schedule for my cars might go into here. 
Uh, in my uh, actual notebook, I have a travel checklist, the things I want to remember to pack uh, when I go on a trip. Any kind of lists that might be helpful to me in the future would go into my list reference archive. Uh, same thing with work. Anything I get at work that I don't need now, not actionable now, but I may need in the future, can go into this reference or archive notebook. I did work with a client who traveled quite a bit, and for him, we created a notebook for travel. And in that, we created a note for every city uh, he regularly traveled with. And in that city, he could list restaurants he liked, the hotels he liked to stay in, things he's seen. So, you know, if he comes back to the city, he has a good idea of where he wants to go and what he wants to see or where he wants to eat. But also, when people ask him for recommendations, he has that information. So I told him to create a note for every city that he travels to. Uh, one thing I would say, though, uh, about uh, this, this reference stack is don't create too many notebooks. Uh, search is your friend. In, in fact, to be very honest with you, I rarely open the notebooks. Uh, I usually just go to the search tool and I type in a term, uh, whether that be, you know, Italy, and then it'll bring up my notes that I have there. So uh, don't do an A to Z. Uh, you don't need to do that. Someone asked me if they should create a notebook in the stack one marked A, one marked B, one marked C. No, don't do that. Just keep it to the bare minimum uh, that you have. When I had a nine to five, I uh, had an archive for projects and I put any completed project uh, into that archive notebook. But that's about it. So give it a try. My reference system inside of Evernote has saved me more than once when I need to track something down because I can just use that search tool. So before we go though today, I want to answer a viewer question. Garrett emailed me and said, you shared how to create a desktop folder to import things directly into Evernote, but is there a way to email something to Evernote and direct it into the specific folder rather than the inbox. Garrett, there is. Now, of course, you know that everyone has an individualized Evernote email address, and you can find that under your account information. My advice is don't share that with a lot of people. It's mostly meant for you to send items directly into Evernote. So what I frequently do is if I'm sending an email to someone, I will address it to them. I will blind copy my Evernote email address, and then when I hit send, the, uh, the email goes to the person I've designated it to, and a copy will go into my Evernote folder. That's great, but it will go into my inbox, and then I have to sort it later. And that's perfectly fine for most of the things I do. But once in a while, I will send something to someone that I want to go into a very specific notebook. It might be a specific project that I'm working on. And I don't want it to first go into my inbox. I want it to go into a particular notebook. In this case, what you do is you type in the subject of the email, just like that. But then if I want it to go into a specific project notebook, let's call this Project A, and I already have a notebook set up for Project A inside of Evernote, all you do is you type the at sign and then the name of the notebook, and then the name of the notebook. And then you can type your message here that the person will get, but when it gets to Evernote, it will automatically be filed under Project A. So in this case, I'm just going to uh, ask it to send it directly into Evernote. There's nobody else who's getting this message. I hit send, and now in a matter of seconds, that email has gone into my Project A folder. I don't use this often uh, because I do like sending most things into my inbox and then I can process them later. But as I said, if it's something very specific that I know will end up in a particular notebook, this is how I get it there. Send me your questions about Evernote and I'll try to answer them 
in future videos. Just post your question below or email me at daveedwards at outlook.com.